Hello, St. Francis community. It's me, Kevin, again this Saturday for our Thought of the Week. Uh, it is May 9th, right before Mother's Day. If you have an opportunity, do something great with your mom. My mom and I today uh, did an online cooking class where we learned how to make Eggs Benedict. It was awesome. Uh, we had a great time. Be sure to be creative with it. There's plenty of stuff to do still that you can do at a social distance and still have a great time. So I encourage everyone to show some love to your moms tomorrow. Um, Today, for the Thought of the Week, we are going to be talking a lot about the Catholic social theory of subsidiarity um, in regards to what we're going to do in a post-COVID world. Um, before we do that, I want to just remind everyone that you can find links to our masses on the Facebook page. We're having a bit of Wi-Fi issues, uh, as everybody is. We're working through it, figuring it out. So we've recorded the Mass, and it'll be on later. So be on the lookout for that system of finding the Mass online. Today, for the Thought of the Week, we will not be doing songs with Denise because Denise has allergies. I have allergies. <laughs> I wore my mask today for Mass. And, you know, I just want to be careful because really anything these days just sets off red flags. You think you have, you might have the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> but I took my inhaler and I feel great, so. You are not yeah. calling it but the Rona. I'm calling it Rona. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm, perso I'm personifying her. Um, yeah. She's a mean gal. Yeah. And we don't like her. Right. Uh, but anything just, you know, I just want to be super cautious. So I covered myself today. Um, so no so songs from Denise. Me. No songs because I can't have all my breath in there. So, but next week. I'll be good. That's so sad for a singer. Yeah, it's tough. It's Singers go through this year round, actually. There are bad seasons, there are better seasons. Um, in this particular building, um, we have to, um, we really have to be, uh, I don't know if it's because of the air, the air quality in here, and it's an older building, but singers have a lot more trouble sometimes in, in, the, in the fall, especially. And um, yeah, like the allergies are worse or their colds are worse. I don't know what it is. Do you know of any famous singers that have asthma? Oh, I don't. Does Celine Dion have asthma? I bet she doesn't. <laughs> I bet she has her own doctor. She has her own doctor that, that she pays to keep her healthy. She There's probably a few famous singers out there who have asthma. I'm though. sure they do. And the thing is, I've never had it before. I've never asthma? had it before. I, I didn't grow up with asthma. Oh, weird. That is yeah, weird. Yeah, it's a recent thing. So. Well, you got to be sure to keep your mask on and. Uh, oh. All that, all the cautious, <laughs> all the cautiousness of that. Yes, yes, we want to stay careful. Well, alongside um, this concept, I wanted to discuss with Denise today. I'm here still. I have this photo uh, from the magazine, the Knights of Columbus magazine, of Pope Francis at his exhortation a few weeks ago, his uh, Eucharistic um, exhortation a few weeks ago, that I encourage everyone to go look out on. This image I was thinking about is a perfect emblem for Catholics in the world today during COVID uh, because we are truly, in a way, isolated. Pope Francis is isolated on his own in St. Peter's Basilica with the Eucharist, so we are isolated in our homes. We don't have the physical presence of Jesus in our lives through the Eucharist right now because of no masses, but we do have that spiritual connection still. Mm -hmm. And I think Pope Francis is the perfect leader of the church right now because he's working really, really hard to keep us connected spiritually and tangibly to the church when we can't be here. Yeah. So go, Papa Francesco, you're amazing. Keep it up. <laughs> I don't want to do, do they're, that. They're opening masses in Italy. Yes, and so... How's that gonna work? I'll tell you. Okay, So um, one of the, the things I wanted to talk about today was this concept of subsidiarity and the common good and uh, being in solidarity with people locally. So in America Magazine, the Jesuit magazine, they wrote an article about how in the post-COVID world, we are gonna have to rely more and more on our physical, emotional, spiritual relationship to our localities and the people in our localities. Mm -hmm. That COVID will have changed for forever the way we go about our day and our lives. Prior to COVID, nobody stopped. Nobody took time to relax. Nobody took time to think about their lives because we had the routine. For decades, we didn't have a break in routine. Mm -hmm. I think 9-11 was probably the last 
pseudo break in a routine and upended travel and cho totally changed the way we live in the world. But COVID is astronomically different than 9-11 in a way weirder sense. Mm -hmm. So when we're done with COVID, I personally don't want to see people just get back in the routine of like commuting to work, coming home, not being involved in their community. America Magazine and the Pope is really calling for us to reconnect with our community in a more substantial way. Mm -hmm. Going into your town squares, going to your farmers markets, going to the locally owned places and getting to know those owners, meeting the people in your community to create that solidarity. And then in that subsidiary sense of Catholic teaching, which is that you shouldn't have to go to a bigger system if a smaller system exists to provide you what you need. Yeah. So yeah. go to that farmer's market. Yeah. Go help out that farmer. Businesses. Yeah. Know who's next door. Yeah. Go talk to your neighbor. You know, yeah. That went away. Like my neighbors, <laughs> like, I mean, isn't that, okay. How many of your neighbors do you talk to? I mean, how many? Do yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've lived in the same neighborhood for two years and I probably talk regularly to you know, maybe two or three of them, but nobody can just come knocking on your door. You can't sit on your front porch anymore. No, you know? and, and the big yeah. issue is like people, people, and I'm speaking for myself, I'm dealing with a lot of like emotional paranoia. Yes. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think a lot of people are. Yes. Paranoid about getting COVID, paranoid about not having a job. Mm -hmm. Some people are getting desperate. Like mm -hmm. oh, we, yeah. we have more unemployment than ever before ever. in global history. Yeah. This beats the depression, this beats the recession, the great lockdown <laughs> has changed it's amazing. the whole thing. It's so unbelievable. It's yeah. unbelievable. So that's why we have our religious leaders talking about the social theology of Catholicism, mm -hmm. going out and supporting your localities, supporting your neighborhoods, finding ways to reconnect on that spiritual level yep. that's like you and that other person. How can you help each other out? Yep. today yeah. um, and that's and that's sort of what's going on in Italy right now I was just talking with my friend in Italy in Milan which is in the Lombardy region which is the worst hit place yeah in the world really I mean, eh, actually the state of Washington might have been <laughs> or New York City now New York. Um, yeah. New York City but Lombardy the northern region of Italy was the first place that really took a beating mm -hmm. and Italy shut down everything Yes. All of it shut down. They're now coming out of it little by little. And in this article about going to support your farmer's market, going to support your neighborhood, and not going too far. Like you, don't, you don't have to drive somewhere to help someone out. Go to uh, downtown Burien and go help out someone in downtown Burien. Mm -hmm. Go, yeah. And so this article was saying how these streets and neighborhoods in Rome have started to reopen and they had this great quote from a butcher that said I'm seeing customers to my butcher shop that I haven't seen in 20 years wow. because people are coming out of their homes and they don't want to go to the supermarket they want to go to B&E Meats <laughs> they're local you don't have to go out far there's not that many people um, and yeah no absolutely totally. I would do the same thing so like yeah. my favorite place that I'm going to support lately more than ever before is the Hans German Deli. Oh yeah. I love that place now. Yeah. But I would never have like made it a routine thing if yeah. COVID didn't happen. Yeah. So like I want to go support her. Yeah. She, she needs it. She needs it. She's been yeah. there forever. That's so nice. And so and so Rome has started to reopen and Italy's starting to reopen in that way. The state of Washington has two. Just coming over here, I was driving down 152nd, and a few retail shops have opened for curbside stuff. Mm -hmm. But we we are a long ways away from perusing inside shops like we used to do. No, it's not going to be unless you're Fred Meyer, Target, Walmart, those stores. But you're right. We are far. I, I, I don't understand why they don't do that. <laughs> it's the same risk. I mean. I go there, and I'm, but in any case, everybody has the same attitude of in and out. Right. And it should be that way. Right. But yeah, we are never going to be able to go back to normal and yes, and, and, and just 
Yeah, going going on your spare time because you're bored or yeah. you know you have something to shop for. Now these days you better be in and out to get it, and it, it'll be that way for a while. Which is why even leading up to the opening of masses, mm -hmm. like even this weeks long process of getting back to opening up masses, we're not going to see these pews full no. for months. I think minimally in the next month or two, we might be able to open up for masses with limited structured attendance. Yes, it would be like 50 and that's it. And we'd have to open up for more masses probably, you know, but at the same time, there's the process of making sure that after everybody has left the church that we clean and, you know, it's, it's going to be very, I mean, you have to be on top of that. Right. Um, and Which yeah. is that call for the common good, like that call yeah. for solidarity and, and subsidiarity in today's world. Yeah. Thinking, if I'm going to be in this pew next to Denise. Yeah, let me help take care of her. I need to take care of Denise because yeah. yeah. she got asthma. And <laughs> so, apparently so. <laughs> you know? So I'm going to have to not hug Denise or yeah. stand within six feet. So we've got, we've got some mm -hmm. mind changing to do here. Yeah, you can't hug anybody. You can't shake hands anymore. You can't. It's, it's crazy. It's yeah. so, yeah, it's, it's just unbelievable. It's nuts. But yeah, going back to that, I always think about what church will look like when we get to that point. I'm really interested in, in seeing how Italy goes about it and what their masses look like inside of their churches. And um, I, was, I was even going to suggest, hey, Father, let's go do mass in the parking lot. <laughs> Why not? It's summertime. Let's open it all up, you know, because their church is talking about drive, drive through or just, you know, if they're saying mass when people are in their cars. I don't know. I mean, it's crazy. In the governor's <laughs> stuff he put out, it says if you do drive through spiritual services, yeah. you can't leave your car. No, you have to be in your car. You have to be car. in your car. And then even just the handling of the Eucharist, you know, it's such a delicate issue. You can't get tongs or you can't no. give the Eucharist with gloves on. It's just, it just, that's not the sacrament and that's, that's not how you, you handle the body of Christ. So going back to even giving Eucharist, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, do you have like a, you know, like a droid? <laughs> right. What do you do? A little R2 giving... <laughs> Little R two D two running around handing out the Eucharist. No, what? So what will that? Jesus be? didn't say, "Do take this in memory of me with tongs." No, he so <laughs> going somebody's around. hands have to give it. So well, yeah. and Father James Martin uh, did a hilarious tweet where someone was saying, "You know why? What's the deal? Why can't you just do it with gloves?" And he was telling why you can't do mm -hmm. it with gloves. And then he said also the difficulty of doing this in COVID because he goes, as a priest, you're bound to have your fingers licked by somebody. That's true. That is so true. Yes. A lot of people don't want to touch sacred sins. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. It's we, we, we have a long we, way to go. And it just requires us to think a little bit differently about how we relate to one another in the pews, in the community, focusing on supporting people and helping people out. It's a matter of, yeah, going forward, it's really, how do I take care of my community? Especially when over half of the population of Catholic churches today mm -hmm. are over the age of 65. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. more things to think about, more thoughts of the week. Yes. But thank you for joining us for this thank one. Thank you, everyone. Denise, thank you, Kevin. Keep your mask on. I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just as well, I promise. <laughs> All right, God bless everybody. Bye, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day.